much for the video. Well, hello everyone. This is Ashit Rukshana from India, who is currently here as a moderator for the Youth Made Conference, an internship university offered conference, which is for the youth, by the youth, of the youth. And today we are going to discuss about the role that is played by the youth in the digital media. And before we go any further, let me introduce you all to Snigda, um, Dr. Snigda Kadim. So she is she, uh, Chief Operating Officer and the Director of Academics Global in International Internship University and student of International Internship University Research Center. And she is the Chief Editor of Revolution e-magazine in IIU. A seasoned educationist for the past 22 years, she is a visionary and also a school principal, a keynote speaker, panelist, social worker, and a writer and a blogger with passion for the academic and holistic development of the students. She has attended various seminars, webinars, and training programs. She has received many awards and rewards at national and international level. While talking about you, ma'am, it's really exciting. <laughs> Let's begin. Always oh, on mission to work for the other. I uh, request everyone to kindly mute themselves mute so that yourself. we can have a smooth conference. Thank you. So, without any further delay, let us call out a visionary who is always on a mission to work for the upliftment of the underprivileged section of our society, none other than Dr. Snake Dakatil. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'm really feeling very privileged to be one amongst the youth today. Thank you. International Internship University is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs globally. It is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to providing better and virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. IIU is metamorphosing the conventional education system by cutting down the additional costs and providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses and internship to their e-learners across the globe with the help of our eminent expert global educators. In a short span of time, IIU has opened its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit Sir, a committed and inspiring social activist passionate educationists from the last two decades, providing education to the students from various social and cultural backgrounds. He has publicized the world education policy, One Education, One Foundation, One World, WEP. The visionary Piyush Pandit sir had just one dream. No child should be deprived of education. He is working towards it day and night. He is safeguarding and promoting education and well-being of learners at all the times of life is really commendable. The sky is the limit for your dedication and hard work, sir. It's our heartfelt gratitude to you, sir. IIU is the change. IIU brings the change. IIU is the revolution. IIU has formed eight councils. Just now we have seen in the video that is Women Entrepreneurs Council, International Student Development Council, International Youth Development Council, and International Council for Educators. The main objective behind the councils is to provide support in every respect to the students, youths, women entrepreneurs, and educators. The role of youth is simply to renew, refresh, and maintain. Youth have a role to renew and refresh the current status of our society, including leadership, innovation, skills, etc. Youth are expected to advance the current technology, education, politics, and peace of the country. As rightly said by the founder of IIU, youth are the future of the world. So youth development is directly related to the development and progress of the world. With the vision to improve the lives of children and adolescents by meeting their basic physical, developmental, and social needs, and by helping them to build the competencies needed to become the successful adults. Piyush Pandit Sir formed the International 
Youth Development Council by International Internship University. IIU Youth Development Council foresees a world where all young people are inspired, equipped to realize the future they want. It helps youths all over the globe to improve their lives through an educational process that applies knowledge to critical issues, needs, and opportunities of education and employment. We at IIU Youth Development Council committed to a complete makeover of the youths of the globe with the help of counseling programs, training sessions on leadership, legal education, lifelong education, entrepreneurship, health, hygiene, public interactions, soft skills, wellness, regeneration, languages, culture, etc., etc. The least is endless, dear audience. Piyush Pandit, sir, strongly believes that youth of IIU, IYDC should meet their counterparts across the globe to broaden their horizons of knowledge, understand cultural perspectives, and assimilate the best practices to incorporate in their lives, thereby enhancing the flavor of living, a life of dynamism, power, economic fulfillment, to leave a mark and legacy for the prosperity. IIU Youth Development Council connects youth with opportunities to transform their lives. Digital technology can help enhance education, reduce youth unemployment, and promote socioeconomic development. But for youth to benefit from these opportunities, all young people must be equipped with a range of technological skills and have affordable access to connectivity. Digital literacy promotes students' learning by providing a solid foundation for students to engage with online resources by utilizing digital tools effectively in the learning process. It is estimated that tens of millions of future jobs will be require far more advanced digital skills, including coding, software, app development, network management, machine learning, big data analysis, and the internet of things, cybersecurity, and distributed ledger technologies like blockchain. While young people are often considered digital natives, the majority of them may not actually possess sufficient job-relevant digital skills to fill the vacancies. For young people to engage meaningfully in society, youth must be equipped with the skills, opportunities to advance their vision of a connected future. International Internship Universities, Broader Generation Connect Initiative seeks to empower the youth. International Youth Development Council of the International Internship University will enrich youths of the world with digital education to achieve their economic growth with a skilled manpower. IIU Youth is the hope for the future. So let us know more about the International Youth Development Council of the International Internship University through this video. Please, can we have the video? IIU, Youth Development Program focuses on developing young minds and making their one-time opportunity, a lifetime achievement. We want to create a modernized cultural environment of social education and welfare so that our growing youngsters will understand the value of roots. We always hear that youth is confused and misguided. They are confused and miserable because no one guided them. We are motivating and guiding the youth of India to be aware of the truth and to take action against falsehood. Youth are the future of the world, so youth development is directly related to the development and progress of the world, Piyush Pandit. With the vision to improve the lives of children and adolescents by meeting their basic physical, developmental, and social needs, and by helping them to build the competencies needed to become successful adults. The founder of IIU, Piyush Pandit, decided to form IIU International Youth Development Council, 
Piyush Pandit at IIU International Youth Development Council endeavors to bridge the gap between global and local in each part of the world. He, with his strong teamwork towards the development of youth across the globe, exercising resources to engage youths all over the globe to learn, share and grow. Piyush Pandit has strongly believed that childhood is a unique and crucial stage of human development. IIU International Youth Development Council is always looking for young and enthusiastic minds who want to get involved with us and participate. IIU International Youth Development Council constantly appoints executive committee members, officers, and members for our various activities, whether it's short-term or long-term. Piyush Pandit is very confident that volunteering is and should be part of our lives as citizens. However, internship opportunities along with education can be a great way to gain much-needed experience for the youths of the world. Piyush Pandit, the founder of IIU, made internship opportunities easily available to all the youth of the globe through International Internship University. Piyush Pandit has developed various programs and services for youth from the underprivileged sections of the society who were poor, orphaned, delinquent, or mentally ill. Focused heavily on helping them avoid their natural inclination toward vice and sought to help them gain useful occupation. Focusing on developing the strength of the youths of the world. Rather than trying to keep teens from engaging in risky behaviors, youth development programs focus on helping them grow into happy, healthy adults. If the values will be imbibed in each member of the IIU International Youth Development Council for their progress and growth, which will ultimately lead to success. Youth development builds on six C's which help to prepare youths for success in every endeavor. IIU works hard to have a positive view of one's actions in areas like social, academic, cognitive, health and vocation, interpersonal skills such as conflict resolution, cognitive abilities such as decision making, performance in terms of grades, behavior, and attendance. Nutrition, fitness, and rest make up health competency, are important factors that affect the development of the youth, which in turn affects vocational competence such as work habits and career exploration. Our objectives are as follows. To initiate, implement, and complete projects and activities which will be of help to the youth and the community. To develop and provide opportunities for leadership and service, to encourage the personal growth of leaders through participation in district, state, and national meetings and organizations. To promote respect for law and order and the general welfare of community. To promote an awareness of human relations, of power structures, and how one effectively operates within them. These objectives are realistically approached through increasing avenues of cooperation among the youths, to develop youth's potential and encourage to make a well-informed, honest, interested, and active citizenship. To develop not only leadership abilities within the youth of today, but also leadership for the community, state, and nation of tomorrow. Youth Development Council foresees a world where all young people are inspired and equipped to realize the future they want. IIU has the vision that youths of the globe should have, safe, healthy, and stable places to live, learn and work. Opportunities to access high-quality, affordable health care. Opportunities to acquire education, training, life skills development and to succeed in jobs, careers, self-sufficiency, and adulthood. Special bonding with family, peers, school, supportive adults, and community. Well-trained, knowledgeable in the field, competent, compassionate, and culturally responsive connection with other organizations, recognition of their community for their strengths and provided multiple opportunities for civic engagement, service, and leadership, thrives throughout all phases of their development including early and middle childhood, adolescence, and young adulthood. Our mission is as follows. IIU, Youth Development Council helps youths all over the globe, to improve their lives through an educational process that applies knowledge to critical issues, needs, and opportunities of education and employment. 
IIU Youth Development Council connects youths with opportunities to transform their lives. IIU is committed to a complete makeover of the youths of the globe with the help of counseling programs and training sessions on leadership, legal education, lifelong education, entrepreneurship, health and hygiene, public interactions, soft skills, wellness and rejuvenation, languages, culture, visual and performing arts, parenting and multitasking productively are undertaken with enthusiasm. IIU strongly believes that youth of IIUIYDC should meet their counterparts across the globe to broaden their horizons of knowledge, understand cultural perspectives, and assimilate the best practices to incorporate in their lives, thereby enhancing the flavor of living a life of dynamism, power, and economic fulfillment to leave a mark and legacy for posterity. He feels that the confidence of youths all over globe should be boosted and an unstoppable spirit should prevail. Thank you so much, Dr. Stigna, for explaining about IIU, its activities, and it's very interesting to know about the fact mm -hmm. that IIU also allows thousand plus courses and internship to the e-learners and across the globe, and it, in a short period of time, the IIU has spread its wings all across 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of the visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit. It is very inspiring that the IIU, in this short span of time, has created four councils, which is the Women Entrepreneurs Council, the International Student Development Council, the International Youth Development Council, the International uh, um, Council of Educators. So IIU is the change, IIU brings the change, and IIU is the revolution all across. Without any further delay, today we have tons of youths who are going to perform in a way that we never imagined, in a way that we never ever thought any youths would be performing. Without any further delay, let's be motivated and result-oriented graduate of the University of Professional Studies and a Transformation Academy. So he is a certified professional master of mindset life and a career, business, and entrepreneurial coach, and he is also a world-leading accredential programmer. He is a dedicated life coach with experience in research and direct counseling positions and highly educated and well tried with expertise in dealing with financial, physical and relational issues. He is a professional in leadership and management, CMI to UK. He has also personally tried more than 1,500 individuals in entrepreneurship and financial management and with his famous 45 Minutes with Confidence program. He is the founder of Nexus Professional and Accounting and Tax con, um, Consulting Firm, and he is the founder president of Confidence Energy. She is, he is the Community Development Project CACDP, and also the co-founder and project lead for Nexpo TV and online television. He is currently the director of business and proposal. Uh, he is also in the HK Afria Institute and HQ Ghana. He is also currently the country director of International Internship University Ghana and the director of conference IIU Africa references. So it's very inspiring to know about your complete details. I can't wait to get you started. Over to you, Mr. Kanti. I am very confident that you will be performing in a way that I never imagined. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to each and everyone. And I thank IIU, the board, and the youth that are gathered here and other speakers for this great opportunity to be among one of the speakers here today. Yes, today I thought it would have been a nice, be more if it could have been in an interaction session. But since I'm to present, I'll go on with the presentation. So I would like I would like my presentation to be projected for me so that we can move on. So we are saying today we are going to talk about the role of the youth in digital education. So first and foremost, as being introduced, thank you for the wonderful introduction. And I bless God for how far he has brought me as well as others. 
So now, these are three main keywords that are being put together in today's topic. That's one, youth. The second is digital and the third one, education. And with these three strong words, they are things that hold up to any organization as well as a country. So as the saying goes, the youth are the future leaders of uh, like future leaders, the generation and all these things. So now looking through this topic, I have bring out four learning outcomes or presentation outcome, which is centered on understanding the youth, then why education, then we talk about the concept of digitization, as well as the digitization, uh, like digital education versus the traditional education. So now, why youth? Who are youth? What do you understand by being a youth? Now, a lot of definition actually takes into consideration only the age. <laughs> They take the age group to form the youth. So mostly some talks about roughly from 13 years to 45 years. Others also talk about 18 to 40, among others. But for all these definitions, I deduce myself a definition for youth, which means that anybody who have an active mind is a youth. So it doesn't mean whether you are 80 years. As soon as you are 80 years and you still have an active mind to perform anything on this, earth, then it means you consider yourself a youth. That's my way of identifying or defining youth. So now when you look at, sorry, I use graphical presentation in my, in my slides. So we are just going to use it to discuss Sorry, yes. So now when you look at the symbol of youth over there, you have Y-O-U-T-H, and you see people doing different things. So what it tells you that, yes, when you are a youth, it means during your youthful days or during the time of youth, you get the energy to be able to provide anything on this earth. So it could be painting, it could be drawing, it could be teaching, it could be learning, it could be any so much that is considered as youth. Then also when you come to the other aspect of youth, youth are categorized into three. You can talk about the exam, examination, like whenever they do something, how they examine themselves. Then you can talk about jobs. So in relation, when you want to understand the youth, then it must be related to how they work how they are able to create a job or how they are being given a job or executed. Then the third one is career. How are they shaping their future? Now, moving to that aspect, then what will happen is that there is a need for us to understand the use for which we've understood. So now the other aspect is to know what education is. What is education? Education simply means it's a process by which one continually learn something new. So traditionally or olden day, you see one or two people in front of us, whilst we have a vast number behind for which one is being taught. Always you see either being written on the blackboard or whiteboard, or you see somebody displaying something for us to, to be able to copy. At the same end, we are being examined on, or we are being asked to produce what we've learned. That's how education was in the traditional way. Now, why is it necessary for us to acquire education? Yes, as we always say that education is the key. It means through education, we are able to acquire something new. Through education, we are able to bring something new on board. Through education, we are able to meet new people. Through education, we are able to make new dimensions and new relationships. 
through education, we are able to enlighten ourselves. Through education, we are able to grow and develop ourselves. So these are the importance of what? Being educated. And who can be educated? Everybody. So I love the motive of or the objective of our founder for bringing that education should be not be limited to what those who have the money or those who have the capacity, but it should be extended to all, whether no matter where your location is. That's a good one. And we thank our founder, Dr. Piaz, for this wonderful piece. So now moving on to the concept of digitization. So when we talk about digital, it just, or digitization is just simply a process by which an information or a data is being converted into digital form. As I said, traditionally, you will see somebody standing in front of you, saying something, putting something on board for you to emulate and they tell you that yes, we are being educated. But this is the place that now education is like what is happening right now. <laughs> you are somewhere in India, I'm in Ghana, others are in USA, but we are able to educate one another. Now, with digitization, there are no location barrier. There are, physic there are no physical barrier. There are what? no contact barrier. But at every point in time, even on your gadget, in your room, wherever you find yourself, you will be able to educate yourself as well as being educated and also educate others. So this, when we are talking about the youth, the role of the youth in uh, digital education, the first and foremost is that we need each and every youth to understand technology. You must be able to possess the technological skills to be able to know how to support your education in digital age. When we move on, then there should be a need for the youth to be able to have a constant learning or to be able to continually find out various issues or invent things that can be able to support education. When we are able to do so, then we will be able to contribute massively to digital education. Then also moving on, there is a need for every youth to be able to more do more of researches. Yes, because in researches, you will be able to find out what others have done and what another, uh, like you, can identify what gap you can identify. And identifying that gap, you will be able to make something new into the education. So with this, you can see first the two pictures. First one, someone, a lady in front of a board where two people are watching her. She write and explain things for. Equally, that was a traditional way of education. But when you look at the second picture, the person is just sitting by his computer or something like a screen for which he is learning like the first, the way other people are. So now, what are the differences? First, for the traditional, you must be physically present to be able to learn. But for digitization, what you just need to is to be able to have an online presence. So if you are able to be present on online, you are good to be educated as well as provide education to others. So with this, I will encourage each and every youth to be abreast with the digitalization information that are going on or the nature in which we are, so that we will be able to move our education to the higher height. Thank you very much for the opportunity. This is the little that I have for we, the youth, to be able to contribute to our educational system. Thank you. Mystic Confidence, thank you so much. It was mind-blowing to hear the words that you've said.
And you being such a person with this diverse background, you've already brought all of the insights into a proper manner. And you gave us an insight about each and everything that is happening with respect to the media and the impacts that, this, that it is creating onto the youngsters right here. Thank you so much. It was very insightful, just mind blowing. Okay, so with this being said, now here it's the time for us to call out our next speaker that is Mihail. So today we have Mihail Alexandru Stansu from Romania. He is uh, studying computer science at the University of Polytechnia at Bucharest, and also this year he's finishing teaching module and he is, has the right to be a teacher at school. He has got golden medal to international competitions and, you know, which is like IFIS Tunisia with the project about correspondence between telecommunication and evolution of the process in the society. She has actively taken part in the conference which promote the STG goal and diversity. With this being said, I call out Mihail. Mihail, the mic is all over to you. I think you are on mute, Mihai. You're on mute. We can hear you. Was it? Well, it okay. wasn't. A... Now, do you hear me? It's all okay. Yes, it's, it's good. perfectly all right. Okay. Sorry, I forget this uh, idea. Do you see my screen? So I think let's start. Okay. Your screen is perfectly audible, sir. Okay. Let's start. Okay. Today, this conference is about role of the youngsters in digital education. So first of all, let's try to think out of our box of the young. So the vision of a teacher. OK. So vision for learning helps teachers and school leaders to create a unified set of value and beliefs which drive the development of a high performance learning culture. So something like that. Clear vision, bright future. Teacher try a lot to modulate the students and why not to make great person in the future? Good point. Now, why we should think also in the vision of a teacher and after let's try to combine with the vision of, a, of young people. Okay, so the purpose is about creating educators which are able to craft an ideal image of what it is they wish to accomplish in their classrooms and use this to sustain them throughout their teaching career. So as I said previously, everyone wants to be glorious, to have a great career. And for this, you need a lot of work, but also you need some, uh, let's say, modulation and uh, something which can uh, say, okay, you are on the good way, but Sometimes maybe you are going on straight, not on the straight. So it's very important to be so somebody to say, okay, you are not going straight. Please come back to go straight, something like that. Now, let's try to put in the context more specific. Let's say European, because I'm from Romania. Okay, in our continent, Eurospoons try to provide a multilingual and multicultural education. The European school system consists of two years of early education, five years of primary, and seven years of secondary education. Also, uh, okay, for promoting the diversification and understanding the cultures, it's a module which is called the Erasmus Plus projects, which I think are very important because from there you have a lot of benefits. Let's say, personal because new challenges, new environmental, something like a lot of adventure always, and professional because, okay, from this type of project, you take some basic skills like responsibility, teamwork, critical thinking, and uh, okay, general basic. It doesn't matter on which field are you active, like medicine, IT, philosophy, or something like that to be responsible, to be a team 
workers is very important everywhere. Now let's say more about uh, the constant which I choose about my country, Romania. So we have one module, the first module for uh, kids, primary education. Oh, okay, follows up in kindergarten at age seven takes four years. And it's interesting because uh, you don't pay for supplementary materials or let's say uniforms. Another thing, another step, let's say it's middle education after primary. After four years of primary, pupils move on to, to gymnasium where for the first time they receive exact marks and it's very interesting because until there you, you have only something like that. Sufficient, insufficient, good, very good. But now as a kid, which is a little bit mature, will understand better this using numbers, maths, like, okay, I take four marks, I take seven marks, or the best I take 10 with a star, one star, something like that. And it's interesting because there you learn a lot of general knowledge and yeah, why not? Another thing, vocational education. Okay, after this, you can go to university or go to vocational education, which I think is very interesting because it's uh, programs which promote the creativity on this idea. And not at least tertiary education or better, let's say, university, where you learn some more uh, knowledge on a specific area. And uh, yeah, this is the Romanian system. And let's see what's next. One expectation, because it was also pandemic period, it was about digitalization, because today our conference is also about digitalized for you. Okay, government tried to improve this idea with laptops or uh, internet of things. And I think can be a, a very great uh, idea to help the young population to understand better the notions from general notion to specific notions. And we hope we are still involved in the good way. Another expectation, okay, young, Okay, young. So it doesn't matter which type of young. So it's about diversity, which can be cool because it doesn't matter your physical form. It doesn't matter your, your sex. It doesn't matter uh, your nationality. So using this idea, and let's say maybe in digitalization, it's better to destroy this type of stereotypes and uh, try to improve the ideas. Now, what can make easier for you out? Okay, one interesting idea, for example, in Romania, uh, the technology develop a lot. So, or better, let's say, now, all around the world, we are in the fourth industrial revolution, using the information theory, computer science. So, as I said previously, in my country, many young people understand better technology than uh, people who are in the middle age or older. So, youths can help the others using the area of Internet of Things. Because, okay, as I said previously, government try to help the young students let's say using internet, Wi-Fi, using the monitoring, using a good condition like temperature or something like that. Okay, for primary, very good. But uh, after gymnasium, I think also the gymnasium kids and uh, people from high school can help the people with this notion because I think this type of technology is the future. So why not try this type of young try to help the others, try to help the environment or, or something like that. Now, how you can help in digital period? Okay, 
I think one interesting idea, it's about feedback because, okay, it doesn't matter digital or undigital period. The communication is the key to the success. So if you try to have a good conversation with others about this idea, I think there can be making a, a lot of interesting ideas. Like, uh, I don't know, as I said previously, using Internet of Things to have a better life or something like that. Or using teamwork, uh, we can make interesting projects because you are out, you have a lot of creativity. So a lot of brilliant idea, which can be improved in the future if you can work together. Another thing, sorry for the word, interactions. It's, a, it's similar with teamwork, but this type of interaction is okay. I work with my colleague, but also why not to work with a person which on the high level, I don't know, like uh, with a teacher or I don't know, with the principal of the school. And let's try, I don't know, to improve the system of our school about temperature or using a lot of idea from other students together, try to bring solar panel. And we can uh, assure that we can monitorize using IoT the level of energy. So why not to be sustainable using this type of idea in digitalizing? And not at least courage to acknowledge environmental ideas. Okay, maybe some of us don't know uh, uh, how can you help the environmental? But, okay, we are living uh, in the fourth industrial revolution. Social media is everywhere, let's say. So some good uh, messages can uh, help to share and population will find the correct information. So in the in digital period, it's not only, let's say, like say only innovation. It's also about communication. It's also about brainstorming, let's say. Okay, another idea, in my opinion, it's about security because, okay, I started with social media. I think everybody use WhatsApp, Skype, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, Google Plus, Instagram. Okay, sorry if I repeat it. And all of this uh, now, okay, good connection, but also can be inflexible about the flux of the data. People uh, from the middle age are not so uh, very good at this idea. But for example, if we try to discuss with people from gymnasium or high school, they have a lot of better knowledge also than me, something like that. And why not to try to debate on these uh, ideas? And maybe we can bring all of this, all of them, some security ideas. Why not? And another interesting fact, okay. Hackering, cyber, uh, cyber crime, something like that. So, uh, okay. Teacher can uh, help with this, but also uh, youngs who study, who, are, who have passion for this, can also share some messages about configuration, like passwords, like data, like uh, structural property. So in my opinion, young can help if uh, they have a lot of courage from the people. Some of them, for example, in the cyber area, cyber security area are, uh, okay, this is a statistical fact, very shy to express their message and are a little bit introvert. So if you can give them some courage, some confidence, let's say, they can uh, help us with their brilliant ideas or maybe can help us with their skills or something like that. So in my opinion, security can be an interesting fact 
to try to put in the spotlight uh, the young in the digital period. Okay, thanks for audience. And uh, as a reason, what I want to say is the next idea. Okay, we try to help the young people to have a glorious future in the vision of a teacher. But also, let's try to give them the change to help us with their feedback, with their brilliant ideas. So in my opinion, okay, digitalized technology, the key of the success can be the communication. And uh, why not to try to find uh, some interesting uh, project for them, like, as I said previously, Internet of Things, or uh, as I said previously, social media and security. Okay, that's all. Thanks. And if you have questions, I'm okay to answer. Thank you so much. It was very interesting to know about your detailed research and the, the fact that you have researched a lot and you have brought a lot of statistics all throughout. And, um, you know, you being a person who has the authority to teach people, really, I would thank you. I would like to tell you that go for it. Go for it and teach people what you know, because you have a great moral sense and uh, being a person with a gold medal in international competition you have the ability in order to teach people in a way that you are doing right now sir thank you so much for thank you very much for the invitation time. it was a pleasure for me thank you thank uh, you honor, let's say. <laughs> thank you so now over to the third speaker of today's session that is none other than murariu andri from romania so he lives in a medieval city in the heart of the country called Cebu. And Sibiu, he just finished the uh, 12th grade and applied for the university. And one of his other hobbies is traveling and meeting new people from all around the globe. And he also went in Erasmus Plus project in Poland. So now over to you, Murario. I don't know what else you have bought in order to get us travel with all your accommodations all throughout. Over to you. Hello, guys. Um, I would like to say thank you. Um, uh, for inviting me here. And I will now share my screen with you. Oh, yes. And I will start. Uh, yes. Well, I will start with the, uh, with the youth and then I'm going to go over to the education part. So let's start. Um, I would like to start uh, with the defining qualities of the youth because I think they are the most important for uh, for for categorizing uh, uh, which person is uh, is a youth and and uh, which person is not. I would say that the first and the most Im important quality is uh, uh, is perseverance because uh, uh, because if you give up uh, then you not um, uh, then you don't have the courage to do it all the way uh, as, as a second quality I uh, I put it down uh, not being patient because I think this is important. Uh, because if you don't do it uh, at the moment, uh, then later on, uh, you might not do it. And another quality that is very important is the, uh, is the ability to adapt to new situations because uh, we are living in a world when, um, when the technical advancement is uh, is very high i mean think about it uh 20 years ago the uh they uh the internet was uh, was just a thing and now it is the most important thing or or 10 years ago uh, uh bitcoin was uh, was just 
nothing and now it's something very important. Another quality that I said uh, that is very important uh, that is um, uh, um, uh, being prone to change because we have to. Another quality I said is, uh, is, lo uh, is loving the DIY part. I, uh, and what I mean by this is the do it yourself part because today uh, it is very easy. Uh, you can watch uh, 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 you can watch something on YouTube and then do it. Another quality that I said uh, that is very important uh, is making connections with others so they can help you. Another quality that I said that is very, very, very important is to love or uh, is to love volunteering because uh, you have to give back uh, uh, to the uh, to the community. Okay. The next part I put uh, I want I, I want to talk about about digital education and uh, and what I. See, uh, and what I see it to be like. I said uh, that is uh, uh, that I said that the that the digital education is a new concept for a lot of people, but it has been around for some time. And sometime, I mean, I think about ten years or so. Um, uh, this type uh, uh, of education became. Uh, became known uh, after the after the COVID pandemic because then it was the most important time for it. Okay, and the upsides of of this type of education is that you can study uh, from anywhere. I said because uh, if you live in the city, uh, the rent is very high. And and you can move somewhere uh, uh, with an internet connection, and uh, and you can study from there. Um, the only thing that uh, that you need is an internet connection in order to get a diploma and have a job. Uh, I also thought that you can study at the best universities. Uh, uh, and you don't have to spend a, uh, a lot of money on food, uh, rent, uh, transportation. And I think that the online universities are, are actually cheaper than the ones that you go face to face or to class. And uh, I also said that, uh, that you learn fr uh, uh, from from people who are who are who are roughly your your age, because as an example, uh, in Romania, uh, when the pandemic hit, and we had uh, uh, to switch to the online uh, online teaching um, activity, a lot of teachers. Uh, didn't know how to do this because they were too old and uh, they didn't have the means. So yeah, and uh, I also wrote down that you can adapt to new situations. Moving on, I I roughly uh, explain uh, why old people don't like uh, don't like the new type of education. This uh, uh, this uh, this digital education is a uh, is a revolutionary form of learning because they are uh, unconventional um, uh, ways of learning, and um, and they are not based on the old uh, on the old principles 
I don't know, uh, such as going to class, uh, tests or notes and, um, and all of this system uh, is based uh, uh, just on marks, not on knowledge. Uh, the digital education is uh, uh, is more focused on um, uh, on learning uh, in groups, uh, uh, projects, uh, uh, just learning by doing it. Uh, actually, uh, uh, and this type um, of education. Uh, 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 is based uh, more on the knowledge that you have, not on the marks that you get on an exam or something like that. Moving forward, I want to I want to talk about uh, the connection uh, between youth and technology. Uh, um, it's a widely known fact that uh, that younger people uh, love technology and they are uh, and they are accustomed to it so much compared uh, to the old people that uh, only caught it I don't know 10 years ago and they are trying to cope with it uh, uh, the younger generation actually loves it and it embraces it or Example, uh, uh, when TikTok appeared, uh, uh, a lot of teens were on it and only a very small part were, uh, were adults or, or, the, or the older, older generation. So, uh, so yeah, um, uh, so just the teens are, the ones that actually make the difference and um, help with the technology. And I would also like to say uh, that the youth uh, should, uh, uh, should learn uh, the older generation how to, use, uh, how to use technology and help them in order to learn it. Um, going over, I would like to say uh, why the youth is so important in education. A lot of people uh, learn things uh, just by remember, uh, uh, just by remembering an example. Uh, this is how their brains work, and. Uh, 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 and that example has to be suited for them in order to uh, uh, to remember it. So this is why I think a younger teacher or something or or someone who, uh, who is roughly uh, your age uh, should be your teacher, not some forty-year-old guy that uh, has no idea what uh, uh, what online games are or so on and so forth. Um, yeah, and this was all of my presentation. I hope that it's okay. It was my first time. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is it. This was my presentation. Uh, Thank you all for listening and thank you. Thank you, Mariu. So you being a 12th grade student and uh, you know getting on with your first ever uh, presentation, you did a great job, to be very frank. And your idea of thank including, you. Um, you know, the, your idea of including about the uh, why the whole but do not like about uh, the technology and the education system that we have. That is very great to know about. And that's a proper research that you have done at the back. Kudos Thank to you. those efforts. And Thank you very all, much. Uh, yeah, thank you. As for all today, for this session, um, here we have our last speaker.
So she is Ellen. Uh, she's from Georgia. So the youngest of the all the speakers that I've spoke today, she's just a 12 years old kid um, who is from the sixth grade of Anabasa's private school. Uh, she is a dancer and she is involved in various regional projects and she has received numerous awards in various subjects with respect to Olympiads. And she has also got uh, second place in the international song contest and she is an active member of TBC. So she tries to protect the areas around her house from you know, pollution and actively organize each and every activities. So she's an active press, um, speaker in the international space, the brand ambassador in sustainable development goals. And these are the goals that are much prior to her. So she is the 2022 regional ecological poster winner of the competition. And now I am very excited to have you on stage. Over to you, Eileen. Hello everyone, I am Ellen Chalabrita from Georgia. Today is an important day, um, important day for me. I am a speaker, IAU for the first time. This is great opportunity and a new challenge for me. Thank you very much, Mr. Peyush Pandit for this opportunity. And also thank you organizers team. Modern technologies are of great importance around the world. Nowadays, people cannot imagine their life without it. It is everywhere in everyday life. Everyone has a mobile phone and laptop. Modern offices are uh, equipped with computers, scanners, printers, and other self propelled machines. The metallic growth of the internet is a reality of our lives. I think what modern, uh, that modern technology can be somewhat dangerous to humans because humanity is becoming more dependent on it. Me, my friends and the majority of people are very dependent on modern technologies, but it has a negative impact on our health. Sitting as a computer for a long time causes vision and spinal problems. Cell phone contain negative vibrations that affect the human body. Yet without them, the world would find itself its choice. Part of the community is confident that new technologies are good. Uh, with the help uh, of computers and the internet, we can find more educational resources. Even now we are together about technology and we are planning a bright future. It should also be noted uh, that electronic items also play an important role in our daily lives, such as a welcome cleaner, washing machine, microwave, and other. How made our lives ace? It is true. That I am not against new technologies, but I am my opinion. Everything needs to be regal and must be protected. What does the like future look like? A comprehensive mobile supercomputer, intelligent robots, self-driving cars, new technological brain enhancement, generative editing, evidence of dramatic changes everywhere and it's happening fast. We are on the verge of a revolution uh, that will fundamentally uh, change the way we live. Uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Previous industrial revolutions freed humanity for animal energy. Endless mass production and broad digital uh, capabilities to billions of people. The fourth revolution is fundamentally different. It is charged by a number of the new technologies that combine the physical, digital, and biological worlds. The result shifts and, uh, and uh, destruction men uh, will live in a time of great promise and great peril. The world has an opportunity uh, to uh, connect people through networks to improve the offenses 
of organizers. Uh, however, the gent is not only about technology. No one can deny that we live in a globalist world. We are in the fourth individual revolutions shaped by advanced technologies from the physical, digital, and biological worlds coming together to create innovation. If we don't change the way we teach, we will have a problem 30 years from now. What our kids uh, are being taught is from the past 200 years ago. Is it is based of knowledge. We have a learn modern values, skills, and new vision, and be smarter. In the spring thinking, teamwork, caring for others, strength qualities uh, don't just set students apart. Uh, they ensure that students can make uh, meaningful contributions to society in uh, ways that make them industry stable. Our daily life is um, in a, is um, only made without uh, new technologies. Smartphones, tablets, computers have become hugely used items. Uh, I are stable and necessary like money or housecakes. Dependence on technology affects all generation, old people, young people and teenagers, and even children. Yet, um, has always been synonymous with newness and modernity. Adolescents spend most of their time with new technologies. They commonly learn though to join video, video games, search for necessary information on the internet, development, maintain relationships, though social networks, telephones, traditional media such as television, radio, and newspaper often find a place in the darkest canal of, of, the, of their uh, free time. Most importantly, new technologies also offer many opportunities for young people to develop and learn. Think of the possibilities open to a high school or a university student who uses the web to find information, write papers, contribute research, learn new concepts and ideas, often interrogating uh, what they find in books, children, and new technologies. How can this learning to stimulate? Technological innovations are not just for teenagers. Scientists, ch uh, children born in the 21 century, they called it digital um, generation, passive in hand. This of great benefits to them, especially in terms of uh, formation. For example, spe uh, specific apps and websites are being development and uh, improved every day that uh, help uh, towards develop their creativity and uh, in, uh, intuition, uh, intuition. And there is weight selection of online games for toddlers after free that promote learning. Technology can create uh, wonderful opportunities for fun growth, interaction, and even foster um, bonds between parents and their children. Adolescents and new technologies. How, uh, um, how to enter critical thinking? In general, children perish technology as something, uh, something positive, essentially uh, because it is related to uh, internet. It makes them smile. The picture detects exactly that, the image uh, of the uh, happy, a smiling child. Of course, it is clear uh, that we should always energize uh, the child's uh, self-control in the use of technology as much as possible. Building help your child's self-esteem uh, at this age is critical to their development and growth. Let's go back to teenagers and dispel to uh, the 
smatter um, stereotype uh, created by st some parents and educators. Yes, technology can be useful, uh, useful for teenagers. It cannot be uh, deigned or demoted. However, it is um, important to know uh, how to use in a balanced way. Uh, without energizing uh, uh, addictions and uh, excessive uh, consumption, uh, it is uh, even more important to teach young people uh, how to uh, create dig digital media in order to strike a balance between consumption and education. What does this mean? This means that Kerikan aspects need to take it into account in daily interaction with digital media. Get information only from rehabilit courses. Opening and reading website doesn't always mean finding real and true information. Unfortunately, the internet is not an ideal world. There should uh, prayers uh, you need to know what uh, your child uh, is reading on a daily basis and explain to him how to select cities to get reliable and um, and uh, accurate information. <laughs> Analyst Candelos new is uh, often found. Uh, you uh, the internet uh, if you uh, manage uh, for analysts uh, it uh, with your child. It will stringer your relationship and help the stringer to form the high views. Errol, Errol, enroll you uh, in, in a time courses. A good online courses will uh, will uh, automatically limit the time spent on social uh, networks, and your child will uh, acquire new skills. It's time for young people uh, to start using their own capabilities and learn about modern uh, platforms like IIU. IIU will help young people uh, realize their potential and become successful. Yes, this is what IIU can do. And now I want to uh, show you a little video. I go online. Welcome. Welcome. And my breath catches in my chest until I hear three little words.
we see technology is developing uh, rapidly. We are the generation of technology, but we help keep your uh, distance and time prepared. Uh, prepared. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for listening to me. Your idea of actually including a video in the end and telling us about what is uh, what we as a society are gaining um, being a fast forward in a nation and what we as a people are, you know, getting about, that's very insightful. Like hats off to you, your years, you have done whatever, you know, even more than what you can do and that's that's like you know that's the spirit and that's how you have to proceed with your life thank you so much Eileen. and after thank all you today so uh, thank, you so you. thank you it was that all pleasure is ours um so our last speaker for today's session is ashima ja from india so with the dynamic personality and multifaceted skills, Ashima is academically specialized in biomedical science and medical research. She is also a dedicated, organized, and a methodical person with a proficient public speaking and mentoring skills. For the last year years, she has actively involved herself in the modern United Nations across India, as well as abroad, in the capacity of both delegate and executive board member, and has been serving for youth development since then. Along with being an eminent leader and learner, she is a competent visionary leader holding various presidential participants according to the globe um, in her institution and also being a recipient of uh, Swatara Shata fellow, uh, Fellowship from the Government of India. So she is a keynote speaker in numerous national and international conferences addressing issues like gender equality, youth empowerment, climate change, and waste management. She has also been handled with the Peace Ambassador Award and the Extraordinary Changemaker Award for the, by the TIP, TIP Global Community of Great Thinkers and um, Young Enthusiastic People. Well, one thing in common, when I read about your complete bio, each and every one of you right here, it really inspires me to work forward for the nation right here. Thank you so much. And over to you, Ashima. Thank you so much, Aziz, for that wonderful introduction. You are so kind. Uh, am I clearly audible, Aziz? You're perfectly audible. Good to go. All right. So I'll just share my screen. It would be great if you could just confirm me once if it is visible to you. Sure. Yes, it is visible. All right. Thank you so much, Aziz. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, since my turn has come almost, almost about two hours, the conference has started. So before I begin, I want all of you to do a very small exercise. All the listeners, all the viewers and all the panel members who are sitting here, just have a big round of applause. I mean, big, big round of applause, virtual applause for Aziz for team IIU and for the entire organizing team. I mean, it's been amazing to be a part of the discussion so far. Let's give a big round of applause, guys. Come on, it's needed. <laughs> Let's hear that sound note. Thank you so much. So I would start by saying a very famous quote by Honorable Bar Mr. Barack Obama. The future belongs to youth, young people with an education and the imagination to create. Ladies and gentlemen, education is the food of youth, the delight of old age, the ornament of prosperity, the refuge and comfort of adversity, and the provocation to grace in the soul. And ladies and gentlemen, as we approach 2030, the idea of achieving SDG 2030, developing digital skills has become a very critical to professional success. Competencies include the ability to conduct internet research, the basic communication, and with the COVID-19 pandemic that was prevalent today, I think almost all of us in the world were so much used to the online platform. So it has become a very important and integral part of our life. However, it's very, very saddening to see the facts that Digital connectivity is just an initial barrier to obtain the technological skills and education that young people need to succeed. Over two thirds of the world's school age girls and boys aged three to 17 years and 63% of the youth lack internet access at home. So 
I would again want all of you to be extremely thankful and grateful to be a part of this discussion, to have been using your internet connectivity, to have been the accessibility and capability to utilize your laptop and smartphones, because trust me, ladies and gentlemen, there are young people who are devoid of it and who are facing struggles. Globally, according to the latest data available, some two thirds of all households were connected, leaving some 2.2 billion children and young people aged 25 years or less did not have access to an internet connection at home. And that is a very serious concern for all of us right now. So just to break the monotony and bring in some sort of fun in movement in the discussion, I would just want all of you to see these interesting photographs. So the first picture talks about how people are educated, but there is so much struggle with jobs. And the second picture, there's a big, big, big chair and so many youth are struggling to make it stand. Isn't it says so much in just one picture? And the third picture, I think many of us can relate to. I mean, online classes, like literally when it was COVID-19, half of the world used to sleep in the morning. Let's admit that. Anyway, moving into the fourth picture, which talks about good morning students, welcome to your remote classroom. But isn't this picture talk volumes about the digital divide that is prevalent? The people were suffering from the kind of connectivity issue, the kind of technological backlogs, so many things. So moving on, we in India believe that combination of innovation, creativity, and energy is the power of youth. The power of youth is the commonwealth for the entire world. The faces of young people are the faces of our past, our present, and our future. And no segment in the society can match up with the power, idealism, enthusiasm, and courage of the young people. So having this thought in mind, there are certain advantages of digital education for students, and that has been talked in volumes by the fellow panelist members who have spoken before me. Personalized learnings make students acquainted with digital technologies, deeper involvement of teacher and parent, better engagement rate, makes students more accountable, extensive learning opportunities, motivate students, make students smarter. Oh my, my, so many advantages of digital education. I don't think I need to explain it further. However, what needs to be emphasized upon today is that our main concern is not just digital education, but also value in education. The aspects of responsibility, sincerity, cooperation, respect, scientific temperament, sensitivity, tolerance, I think all of them plays a very critical part in education because there is a difference between being a literate and being called educated. Literate just knows how to read and write, but educated knows how to take decisions, how to hold responsibility and how to be accountable in the world. And just to divert the attention towards a very critical aspect, since we are talking about two major concerns today, first is the youth involvement and second is the digital education. I think what is more important to discuss here is the importance of confidence, self-confidence. Now let me relate to it why it is important because confidence comes not from always being right, but from not fearing to be wrong. Self-confidence is an attitude about your skills. It is the difference between being unstoppable and feeling scared. So there are two bridge marks and in between them is confidence. So you don't have to be overconfident. You don't have to be underconfident. It's the belief in yourself that yes, you can do it. You need to set real realistic expectations and goals. And trust me, it is a very important aspect when we talk about the role of youth in the world because confidence is a major challenge that most of the people face, not able to express their opinions, not able to talk about their issues. I think self-confidence is a very important aspect that needs to be addressed here. Now, wh what is the major advantage of healthy self-confidence in youth? First, less fear and anxiety. I think all the listeners who are listening to me right now would not deny this fact that because of the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown, lack of social interaction, a lot of people have started suffering from fear and anxiety. Moreover, it is very prevalent in youth because of the time, because it's the career building time, so many responsibilities, so many expectations on the shoulders. Fear and anxiety is a very big issue, that too among young people. And self-confidence helps in avoiding getting rid of these anxiety, break out the cycle of overthinking and embracing the full potential because fear and anxiety, trust me, just, just stops you from achieving what you want to achieve. So self-confidence helps you in fighting that. Improved motivation. 
fosters a feeling of sense of accomplishment. It is very important that whatever we do, we feel satisfied after doing it. And that comes when you have belief in yourself. That sense of accomplishment, when it comes from within, you just feel great about it and more resilience. Self-confidence enables students to handle setbacks with ease. We all fail in life. Whatever we do, it's not necessary that you do it first time and you win. We all face failures. We all face back. back. But what is important is that when we believe in ourselves, we handle the setbacks with ease. And when we handle it, we learn from it. It's not about getting anxious and feeling bad about yourself, but to learn from your defeat. So instead of being crippled by failure, resilient youth get up quickly, learn from their mistakes and try again. And they accept the failure as a part of life and take more chances as a result, which makes them even more successful later in life. So whatever milestones you are having in your life, whatever sorts of problems you're having in your life, always believe that whatever is coming in your life is for your own good, because the problems comes to the strongest soldiers. If you have a problem, a solution will always be there. Just look for it. So just moving on to the presentation part, role of perception and self-confidence. Now, how we perceive ourselves, how we perceive about us matters a lot. The more self-confidence you have, the more likely you will succeed. You know what confident people look like? The advantages they get, and it's something worth emulating. For example, if you see a public speaker standing on the stage and giving a speech, so, you know, so many thoughts goes in their mind. I can give the speech, people want to hear me. I'll put one word after the next. Oh my God, what if audience don't enjoy what I speak, et cetera, et cetera. So many things going in the head. So perception is a lot important in self-confidence. When you start to feel good about yourself, you start to empower people around you. So there are certain ways to build on self-esteem, take care of physical needs, have good food, accept compliment with a smile. Of course, we all love compliments. Don't just accept it, give lots of compliments to people around because world is full of problems. Why can't we just lessen it by complimenting a beautiful smile, isn't it? So let yourself have leisure time, get and give lots of hugs. Trust me, hug is the best form to release tension and stress. Forgive yourself for past mistakes past is gone, future is there. So forgive yourself. Let yourself express a different opinion. Let yourself be perfectly imperfect because perfection can't, it was not even achieved by Carnot's heat engine. So let's not go into that unrealistic perfectness, but to embrace our imperfections. What we can do to increase confidence, self-esteem among people around us. Now, why I'm focusing so much about on self-confidence, so much on the fact that self-confidence, self-belief is very important because ladies and gentlemen, whatever we do in life, whatever discussions we do, even in digital education, the self-confidence and self-belief is a must. In classroom teaching, there is a teacher who will constantly motivate you, constantly encourage you. But in an online system or in a system in which you are learning from a digital media, there is no source of constant encouragement. There is a, There needs to be a constant motivation for you to keep going. Okay, you finished one module in Coursera. There is another module that you have to go. You need some, con some sort of... Uh, kind of you know respect some kind of confidence in you that no i have to get going you have to be resilient for that so self confidence plays a very critical part so it is the hidden thing but it works wonders trust me so when there are people around you who feel less low on self esteem identify their strengths distinguish between their inner and outer beauty tell them that you are amazing and you can do good build on their confidence focus on good rather than bad understand more about what makes good friendships create a habit of positive realism so if you can look at the picture towards the very uh, lower end right side of the slide which talks about i won't do it i can't do it okay i want to do it how do i do it okay i will try to do it and then comes i can do it i will do it and yes i did it don't you think this is the thought process that goes around Let's reach from I won't do it to yes, I did it. There are five important C's of leadership because if you are confident, if you're a good speaker, you can lead character, commitment, courage, confidence, and communication. Confidence builds on other four, trust me. 
So coming back to what I started with, the issue of technology, the role of youth in technological development. There were certain challenges, but what is important and what can be done? Because ladies and gentlemen, just counting on the problems will not solve them. So we need to find solutions. Youth is like a fire. It crept forward. A spark at first glowing into a flame, the brightening into a blaze. The stakeholders, including governments, academia, the private sector, it has to be a collab. One person cannot do it alone. It has to be a collab between different societies, civil societies, that they can design strategies which can help develop young people's digital skills and support full economic, social, and digital inclusion for all youth. Digital technology can help enhance education, reduce youth unemployment, and promote social economic development. So, this is one thing that there needs to be a good, good collaboration. Now, how can we engage youth? Because I have been talking main fold since beginning that, you know, youth's role is very important. The topic itself talks about, in fact, uh, the confidence, self-confidence in youth is very essential. So what is the process of engaging youth? Listen to them, involve them in discussions. And I really appreciate IRU today to involve all the youth in the discussion because listening to them is the first step. Empathize with their problems, understand their issues. Then you are eventually accepted by the young people. Then engagement occurs. There is a great divide in thinking between old people and young people as explained very beautifully by the panelists before me. And I just want to say that if you bridge that gap by listening and empathizing with each other, the generation gap, I think engagement is the best thing that occurs then. And then meet youth in their environment. So, this is an entire circle that goes about meeting the youth, the process of engaging youth in the discussions and projects. Apart from this, let's dwell more into practicality. What else? So we can form a coalition of talented young leaders active in digital space. Governments can put out a call for youth in their own countries to develop a national ICT young leaders program. The government can do that. They can take initiatives. These youth leaders can then organize and advertise ICT. So we can have different youth leaders from different countries talking and advertising about ICT related campaigns. Then we can have organizing and promoting ICT related challenges and competitions. Who said that you learn just by reading books? You learn a lot by challenges and by competition and by failure. So let's bring in challenges and competition and make it more exciting for people to get interested. So there can be fundings and competitions that can ask you to develop creative digital solutions to the existing national and global challenges. Trust me, it is not going to bring in creativity in their minds, but also going to solve major issues that the, their country or the world is facing at large. Organizing re regional youth forums, different, different regions coming together, discussing the issues can bring a lot of change. Feedback with governmental leaders, this will create meaningful change and expand youth participation in the implementation of technology-related policies. Then expanding national elementary and secondary school curricula to include teaching on digital empowerment skills. Now, digital empowerment skills can be advocating for social issues online. One of the major concerns that not just the developing or least developed countries face, but also the developed and high-end countries face the social issues, the issues of women empowerment. There is, apart from technological divide, there is a lot of gender divide in access to proper education, proper learning. A lot of women, a lot of uh, girls are devoid of the education. And when it came to everything to online and COVID-19 pandemic, trust me, these people faced a lot more. So advocating for social issues, creating and sharing content in different media forms. There can be digital engagement skills like taking part in conversations, maybe around artificial intelligence or robotics. Digital participation skills, how to protect digital devices from hackers or phishing scams. Digital well-being skills, how to explore, identify out online. Googling, researching, how to take care of mental health while using social media. Again, a very important aspect that was highlighted by a panelist before me. A very important part of discussion, the mental health and social health issues that are pertinent because of the social media that needs to be addressed. Now, as as you have told in my introduction that I come from a background in medical research, I also would like to emphasize here that what youth want to see future in health governance. And since I am an advocate, youth representative here, I would just like to emphasize my direction, my health governance 
direction here that what we want to we in health sector want to see from youth in future so a human rights based approach is needed where digital transformations in health are grounded in human rights based approach supporting universal health coverage and health for all especially the people who are coming from areas which are geographically isolated or which are socially uh, oppressed those aspects needs to be addressed fostering digital skills education and innovation this needs to be developed by maximum of the people who are blessed with technology blessed with a phone in their hand and trust me when we all are watching this and when you guys when all of you are listening to me i think all of us are extremely blessed by the fact that we can have a phone in our hand and utilize it and you know use internet because the world not everyone has the access to this as well even so i think in that aspect why not use the technology in our hand for the betterment and just not for entertainment of course for entertainment but also for betterment because that is actually needed youth are the key agents of change so we need strong and inclusive health governance that is from my academic understanding that these are the aspects that we want youth in the health governance and digital education and just ending quickly and not taking a lot of your time because it's already already about like a lot of time so i'll just quickly end by emphasizing on the fact this is a very beautiful poem that i read on internet again thanks to internet so today is youth they argue they fight and talk about their rights why don't they get their responsibilities they feel sorrow and distressed and never reason rest why don't they take things positively they show anger and aggression and lot of savage expressions why don't they react patiently they insult and disrespect an elder's orders they neglect why don't they react regard them cordially their attitude is the essence which i am sure is the legacy maybe it's the time to realize our flaw and bring a change that we foresee the purpose in life is comes in between passion mission profession and vocation so the little heart that you see in the center of the picture towards the right is the ideal place to be what you love doing what you good at the world needs it and you get paid for it all these factors matters because you are young because lot of the listeners today are the young people and i don't mean by saying young people that are 30 to 35 years of age because you are young i mean every mind that can bring a change every mind that thinks about progression is a young mind so because you are young you are talking between a world of hate and a world of dreams yeah once again um a confidence please mute yourself sir what about your confidence thank you ashima you can conclude all right thank you so much azia thank you so much confidence so i was just emphasizing on the fact that it's not about the number in the age but it's about the thought so if you have this mind of bringing a positive change in your society you are a young mind and because you are young you are torn between a world of hate and a world of dreams so much to lose and so much to gain so much to fight for and so much to change your talent determines what you can do your motivation determines how much you are willing to do and your attitude determines how well you do it so thank you so much everybody for listening so patiently and it was an extremely extremely honorable and discussion amazing session to you know always express my opinions in front of a great public like you thank you thank you the last speaker at the most uh, energetic speaker ever and of um, each and every point that you pointed out and it really hit my heart because we were we are in that uh, specific span and your idea of not going deeper into what has been already described it's it's quite interesting you know it's it's uh, pointable it's notable and um, your idea of including the um, current career of yours into this presentation that is very insightful because that's what we as a jury do look into when we go for uh, when we go to see a presentation that's very insightful so with this being said i would like to thank each and every one of you right here who have come all across till this extent uh, be it the viewers or the organizers like um, uh, snigda ma'am and uh, be it everyone like emmy ma'am and be it anyone from this organization who have been here and who have been working on this specific purpose all across day and night i would like to really congratulate 
and thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. So, dear panelists, you guys did a great job today, and it was very, uh, you know, uh, fruitful to watch you guys for these merry two to three hours. And um, yeah, it's it's almost like two hours, and I don't know how it far went off. You know, it went in a bit, but each and every second of this is fruitful and it is meaningful. So, with this being said, I would like to call uh, Dr. Sigda Kadam to give an end note on this. And we have a special surprise for each and everyone of you right here. Thank you so much. Mind-blowing, amazing, flawless moderation by the younger sir. You have rocked the show, dear. Thank you so much for being here and accepting our invitation at the last moment. Thank you. Dear youths, students, and audience across the world, I, Dr. Snigdha Kadam, take the opportunity to do two important announcements of our upcoming projects. International Student Development Council invites worldwide membership of the students. Explore, learn, and excel with ISDC. ISDC membership provides free online skill development courses, career enhancement courses, training sessions, workshops with global reputed industry experts scholarship programs, prizes, recognitions at international platform. So do not miss the opportunity. Register soon. Be a member of the world's largest council, the International Student Development Council. Now, just hold on your breath. I am coming with some very, very important and exciting announcement. I take the immense pleasure to invite you all for the biggest interactive knowledge exchange program to be held in India from 27th October to 5th November 2022. We offer you a complete package, BK, biggest interactive knowledge exchange program, an international project with four physical mobilities, wherein India takes the pride to be the first host country. Explore the land of extraordinary diversity, India, with knowledge exchange with educators, students from all over the world with fun, thrill, and enriching experience. Be a part of the panel discussion, workshops, training sessions, talent shows, expert shows, and much more. So BK will bring together students, teachers, educators, and principals from the different parts of the world to explore the unique experience. So do not miss the opportunity. Contact us, contact our vice chancellor. She will guide you in a better way. So indeed, wonderful two hours of session by our young people, our youths of the different parts of the world. Now, just, it's not, it was just a first day, dear all. We are coming up with the two great sessions. The next session will be on next Saturday. That will be on 13th of August. And the third session will be on 20th of August. So stay tuned till that. Much more surprises with International Internship University. Stay safe. See you all again next Saturday. Till then, bye-bye.